space. Is there anything you wish you knew about uh, Sharko now uh, that you didn't know before this occurred? Yes, I wish that uh, a doctor would have been able to tell me, oh, it looks like you got Sharko and this is what we need to do to prevent it from getting any worse or uh, you know, just anything a doctor could have told me to make it better for me so I, I didn't have to get so far with such a bad deformity on my foot and uh, I, w I would have recognized more something that I could have done but I thought I did all the things. As soon as I found out, I tried to go to the right doctors. I tried to get as much information as I could about uh, taking care of the problem. And now I'm s setting up surgery with a doctor to uh, try to take care of the problem because I don't want to lose my foot and leg. I just don't. And uh, I'm trying to do everything possible to keep that from happening. How did Charcot first present in your foot? What did your foot look like? The first thing I noticed was extreme swelling at my ankle and above my knee. And um, I'm on pain medicine, chronic pain for neuropathy normally, but this time the Vicodin would not um, affect the pain. The pain was tremendous in toes and in my ankle. And then about two weeks later, they noticed a bone had um, moved about a half inch to an inch out of place. And the next week I had a patch of redness and um, they thought perhaps it was blood clot. But it turned out after eight hours of emergency room tests that they could find nothing that they could even account it for. Um, and then the redness went away and the swelling went away, but the pain was still um, there. Now this one I can feel is hitting the ground. Stop right there. Can you tell me how Charco has affected your foot? Uh, yes, it's changed a whole lot about my life. One of them is I'm a very active person. I like to get up and go and see people and, and just get out every day and think about trying to drive a car with your foot like this. Sometimes if it's really numb feeling I, or, or raining, um, I can't sometimes drive my car. I have to get back out because I can't feel the pressure of my foot on the gas or the brake. So I know on those days I can't drive the car. And uh, trying to find something decent to put on my foot to walk out to go to any kind of family thing, it's embarrassing because you can't find a shoe to fit you any, and you can't make up a shoe that looks good enough for you to walk out to be in public. And the pain, it's really, really bad for me. Um, I, has, I have trouble getting around now, and I have to sit down and take a lot of breaks. I can't do any of the things that I did before. I can't climb, I can't take a bath by myself, and uh, it's changed in a lot of ways, a whole lot of ways. What do you do for shoe gear on the on your foot now? Uh, I make my own. I, I uh, use a house shoes, men's house shoes it has to be, with a couple sizes larger than what I wear. Okay. Yeah, and, well, I don't use the duct tape anymore. Uh, I, I was using duct tape to try to create a shoe. That was horrible. So I use the male house shoe. I wrap it up in uh, wraps that are meant for... 
uh, legs and arms that uh, sports people wear, you know, ace bandages type thing. And I wrap those first, and then I put a sock over it, and uh, then I put the uh, house shoe on it, man's house shoe. The opposite one goes on my foot, though. I can't use the left one for the left and the right for the right. And uh, I get up and try to walk around and see how it feels. If it doesn't feel right, I take the house shoe off, put another bandage where I think it needs more support because I've got a rocker-type foot now. It doesn't lay flat. It doesn't lay one certain way. It changes. So I bandage it more where I think it needs changed. And then I put the house shoe on, and hopefully I'm ready for what I can do for the day. And sometimes it's not a lot, and if it's a rainy day, my foot already will know it, and I get excruciating pain.